Historic Film Review. Preston Sturgis, The Lady Eve, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Henry Fonda, versus The Hayes Production Code. In the 1930s, Preston Sturgis was one of the highest paid playwriter in Hollywood, yet he was also one of the most unhappiest. He complained that many directors altered his works. In 1940, he traded his screenplays for the rights to direct the films, a political satire, The Great McGinty, and a comedy, Christmas in July, starring Dick Powell. Both were critical and box office success. Preston visualized each scene in his head. He acted out each actor's part. A typist recorded the words and sequence of action, his script. On the set, cameras were placed as stated in his script. They rarely changed. This led to his next film project, The Lady Eve. The original script was rejected by the Hayes office censors, deemed too risque and morally dubious. Still, Preston had a plan to gain the censors' approval. To foil objections of the Hayes censors, Preston used a biblical theme of a man tempted by a shady woman. Preston insisted on Barbara Stanwyck and Henry Fonda as the leads. Both actors were highly regarded by the film audience, though not widely known for comedy. One of Preston's screenplays was Remember the Night, filmed in 1939. On the set, he got to know Barbara Stanwyck. He felt the director was elevating Fred McMurray's part at the expense of Barbara's. He told her then he would write a comedy that would be right for her. Barbara loved working in films and always knew her parts before arriving on set. She often arrived early to hang out with the crew, learn the names of every crew member, their spouse, and children. Preston was impressed by Barbara's work habits. Henry Fonda began his film career in 1935. He often was cast as a strong, rugged individualist. In 1938, Henry and Barbara teamed up in a film, The Mad Miss Manton, a murder mystery with romantic twists. Henry hated the film, but Preston saw their chemistry. Preston knew that Barbara and Henry could deliver the precise dialogue with the proper body language. See anything you like? Hope I didn't hurt you. Of course you didn't. What were you doing up the Amazon? Well, it certainly took you long enough to come back in the same outfit. I'm lucky to have this on. Mr. Pike has been up a river for a year. Note how Barbara delivers her lines in this scene. It's remarkable. That's like telepathy. Uh, I can read many of your thoughts. To distract the censor, the horse kept nudging into the scene. Preston used peanut butter on Henry's hair. Preston rounded out the cast with his stock players. Each part, no matter how small, was carefully drawn for a specific actor. Audiences looked for even the smallest bit actors in Preston's films. To keep his cast and crew relaxed during filming, Preston wore funny hats, clowned with them, and even played the piano during film breaks. The Hayes censors prohibited couples in the same bed. This bed scene was a chaise lounge with only one actor on the lounge, the other laying on the floor. Hayes approved the scene. Still, state and local censors demanded this scene edited or not shown at all. 
Comfortable? Yes, very. Oh, sorry. Oh, hold me tight. Oh, you don't know what you've done to me. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, that's all right. I wouldn't have frightened you for anything in the world. I mean, if there's anyone in the world I wouldn't have wanted to. It's you. Mm. You're very sweet. Don't let me go. Thank you. How was everything up the Amazon? All right, thank you. You better go to bed, Hopsy. I think I can sleep peacefully now. I wish I could say the same. Why, Hopsy? What happens next is left to imagination. Fade out of ship and cutaways to cigarette and breakfast the following morning. Another scene of the couple ends with the side of the ship and cutaway to outside on deck for breakfast after Charles declares his love for Jean. Charles is shown Jean's shady pass. What are you talking about? You haven't fallen in love, have you? To satisfy the Hayes censor, Jean must fall in love with Charles. Jean opens her true innermost feelings. I was a sucker when they told me who you were the morning after I met you. Who told you? Never mind who told me. You mean you were playing me for a sucker? I don't believe it. But if you were, if you were just trying to make me feel cheap and hurt me, You succeeded handsomely. You ought to be very proud of yourself, Mr. Pike. Very proud of yourself. Charles, too proud, rejects her, the temptation. A woman scorn comes to bite. Why don't you stop talking nonsense? Because I want to see that guy. I've got some unfinished business with him. I need him like the axe needs the turkey. Preston, once married to a socialite, was known to take friends at Upper Crust Society. That's the same game. I can tell by the I'll way... I'll take over from here, Mr. Murgatroyd. You and who else? I said I'll take over from here, Ambrose. Ambrose? I said I'll take over from here. You have no right to stand room anywhere. I said I'll take over from here. You have no right to stand room anywhere. I have no room anywhere. Jean shows how easy to manipulate the rich. Once married, Lady Eve tells Charles her shady past, her seven lovers, all the details in one I city. I wonder if now would be the time to tell you about Herman. Herman? Herman? Who was Herman? In the end, Charles makes Jean an honest woman. The couple are in a happy, legal marriage. This allows the film to be given a Hayes seal of approval. Positively the same thing. The Lady Eve Postscript Preston Sturgis, Barbara Stanwyck, and Henry Fonda Preston followed the Lady Eve with four screwball comedies from 1942 to 1944. After 1944, Preston made fewer and less successful films. He often clashed with studio executives and financial backers, such as Howard Hughes. He juggled his time with less profitable ventures, including a nightclub. Preston Sturgis died in 1959, age 
1860. Barbara and Henry were hurriedly cast by Columbia Pictures, a romance between female doctor and idol playboy. This was the third and final film pairing of the two stars. Barbara was next cast in Howard Hawks' Ball of Fire, a mob boss's girl who hides out from the law in a home with professors, including a shy Gary Cooper. Gary Cooper, who co-starred with Barbara in Meet John Doe, recommended her to play the role of Sugar Puss O'Shea in Ball of Fire. And I want you to look at me as another apple, Professor Potts. Just another apple. Billy Wilder, writer of Ball of Fire, was so impressed with Barbara that he cast her in his 1944 film directorial Double Indemnity. Fred McMurray is along for the ride. Here's how Barbara defined film noir's femme fatale. No, I never loved you, Walter, not you or anybody else. I'm rotten to the heart. I used you just as you said. That's all you ever meant to me. Until a minute ago, when I couldn't fire that second shot. I never thought that could happen to me. Sorry, baby, I'm not buying. I'm not asking you to buy. Just hold me close. Goodbye, baby. Barbara received Academy Awards Best Actress nomination for both 1941 Ball of Fire and 1945 Double Indemnity. This followed with so many films that Barbara was a top female money earner of the 1940s. She continued working in both films and television well into the late 1980s. Barbara preferred westerns with strong female leads. After completing the highly acclaimed Oxbow Incident, Henry enlisted in the U.S. Navy to fight in World War II saying, I don't want to be in a fake war in a studio. He served as a quartermaster on a U.S. destroyer and later in air combat intelligence. After the war, he continued in films, television, and on stage. He starred and co-produced the acclaimed Twelve Angry Men. In spite of their long acting careers, both Barbara and Henry failed to win the Academy Awards for Lead Actress Actor until late in life. Barbara won numerous acting awards, including Primetime Emmy and Golden Globe, and even the Cowboy Hall of Fame Lifetime Achievement. Barbara received four nominations for Lead Actress, Stella Dallas, 1937, Ball of Fire, 1942, Double Indemnity, 1944, and Sorry, Wrong Number, 1948. Unfortunately, she didn't win any. Henry was nominated for the lead actor in Grapes of Wrath, 1940. He played Tom Jode fighting for a better life during the Depression. However, Henry's good friend, James Stewart, won for a comedic role in the Philadelphia story. In the late 1980s, Jane Fonda secured on Golden Pond as a film both for her and her father, Henry. Ironically, James Stewart, who won the Oscar over Henry in 1941, originally declined the role before Jane Fonda secured the film rights. Barbara wanted badly to co-star with Henry on Golden Pond. However, producer Jane Fonda preferred to go with Katherine Hepburn. 
In the end, Henry Fonda won the 1982 Academy Award Lead Actor on Golden Pond. Co-star Katherine Hepburn won the Academy Awards Lead Actress, her fourth. At the same 1982 Academy Awards ceremony, Barbara Stanwyck did receive an honorary Oscar for her many performances and popularity with everyone who worked with her in the Hollywood film industry. Henry Fonda was too ill to attend the Academy Awards ceremony. He died five months later at age 77. Barbara Stanwyck died in 1990 at the age of 83. There was no funeral. She was cremated and her remains were scattered over Lone Pine, California, where she made some of her Western films.